Hello everybody, Caliber Whips here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to tie a professional looking fall hitch. In particular, this is going to be a four point fall hitch, four strands, two on each side, and a coarse strand in the middle. So that's what we're going to be tying today. So what I'm going to do here is, once you've reached this part, I'm, I'm actually going to take the whole thing and flip it over like that on the underside. So it's easier to work with. Okay, so there we go. I'm going to take my um, fall, just like that. And then what? Now here's the now here's where it gets tricky. You're going to want to take one of your strands, preferably the opposite color if it's two toned. This is t brown. We're going to do tan. So we're going to go around. Now watch this very closely. We're going to go around, and it's going to go down, not up. Down. Okay. And I'll explain why in a minute. We got a little bug flew in the camera. Okay, so we're going to take a, an opposite color. Now what I usually like to do is I like to tie a knot like that, so I know which one I did. Okay, I'm going to take an opposite color one. I'm going to go around and then down, just like that. And we'll clean it up as we go. It's looking a little messy. Tie a knot so we know which one we did. And then grab a tan colored one. I like to bring it to the front like that. And go around. Make sure you go around in the same direction. Don't go around in the opposite. Uh, because if you notice, all of the uh, little loops that we've just tied, they all look identical. See that? And that's the key right there. So I'm going to give all of them just a gentle tug. Just like that, so they're not extremely loose. And then we're going to find the last strand, the last brown one that we haven't tied. We're going to go around the same direction, but this time it switches. We're going to go up. Now I said go down. This time we're going to go up. And I'll show you exactly why we do that. Okay, so reason being is that if we tied it up like we did to the other strands, the whole f fall hitch would fall apart. And uh, that's not why it's called a fall hitch. So we're going to take our lacing needle, put it on, we're going to feed it under all of them, even the fall. Now what you could do is, you see this crease? We could just go directly under the fall and skip these guys where the top kind of folds over. But preferably that works better with six-point fall hitches when you have more strands to work with. Four-point fall hitches, it kind of looks a little weird. So, whoop, see, now I'm thinking about the wrong way. Well, it's not the wrong way, but it's not the way I'm going to do it today. So I'm going to go under all of them, just like that. Now, don't pull super tight yet, because you don't want the strands to overlap each other. I'm going to find the bottom, the middle, and then the top. And then just slowly ease them up on each other like that. And then pull them all tighter and tighter as you go down. Just like that. See? It's already starting to take shape. So we're just going to keep on doing that. Sorry, guys, about the view. There we go. Okay, so we're pretty much almost done. Uh, as you'll notice, you'll notice this uh, black strand. So what are we going to do with that? So we're going to take, I don't have my pliers on me, so I'm going to use my hemostats. I'm going to take this and kind of give it a pull, kind of like that, to kind of uh, tighten those up. Take my lacing needle, kind of work that down. Kind of close everything up, because what we're going to do now is we're going to trim them about like that far, leaving just a bit exposed for the flame. And then kind of wet your finger down. Make sure not to burn your finger. Molten paracord is not fun to play with. All right, so we're pretty much almost done. Uh, what I'm going to do now is just tighten up all the strands, and then we're going to pound the fall hitch. That's what I call it. And I'll show you guys what that looks like in a minute. 
but first we're going to pull all the strands as tight as we can. Mm. And now we're going to snip them. So this guy we're going to snip very short because if we snip them long, he's just going to fold over as we crack the whip. Okay. And then these guys, make sure not to snip your fall. Every whip maker says that, but uh, I've never done it. I don't want to do it because it's pretty much a waste. Waste of time. Okay. So there we go. We're almost done. So as you can tell, the fall the fall hitch looks pretty nice from this angle. From here it kind of looks a little lech, but you know, it's better than some of the other work out there. And that's pretty much as good as they as they're going to come. But uh we're not done yet. We're going to give it a pound really quick. So what we're going to do is now pound the fall hitch. Just to kind of even everything up. So I'm going to take a mallet Okay, there we go. And all that did was uh, kind of loosen everything up, even things out, but it, but like I said, it loosened things up, so we're going to have to tighten it again. That's why we have the little teeny tassels here. Now, I've been asked before, did the tassels affect it, you know, affect the aerodynamics of it? And uh, the answer is not really. Now, if they're a foot long, of course they would, but uh, if they're smaller, they won't. Okay, pull the little guy out. There we go. So, so that's pretty much it as far as the fall hitch is concerned. So yep, there you go. I hope that was informative. Like, comment, and subscribe. If you, and if you have any questions, please ask them in the comments. Um, I usually answer like the first five or ten uh, that show up. But there you go. A good fall hitch. And uh, this, whip, this whip is almost ready to go. I have to tie the foundation. And, uh, and then wax it, and then once that's done, this whip is going to be on my eBay shop at uh, Caliber Whips. So you can go onto eBay and look up uh, the seller Caliber Whips, and you should see some of my stuff there. So uh, thanks for watching.